Now let's look at breakpoints. These are easy to use initially, but have a lot of hidden complexity if you want to get more advanced. Let's start small, with a simple loop that prints numbers from 1 through 100. I'll write this into view to load. For i in 1 through 100, print got number, string interpolation, i. Just those three lines of code. Now if you want to see exactly what our program state was at the time we call the print function, look to the left of where you've been typing, and you'll see these line numbers. Click on the line number where print is, for me that's line 17, and a blue marker will appear to signal that a breakpoint's been placed. This means the execution of your code will stop when that line is reached, and you have the opportunity to inspect your app's internal state to see what values everything has. If you click on that breakpoint again, you'll see it becomes more faint to show it's been disabled, but still exists. This is useful when you want to keep your place, but don't want execution to stop right now. You can click again to make it active, or right click and choose delete breakpoint to remove it entirely. With that breakpoint in place, Xcode will pause execution when it's reached and show you the values of all your variables. I'll try and run my code now, and we should see our app pause immediately. Boom, it's paused here on breakpoint 1.1. This green line here is where code currently is. Down here in the bottom of Xcode, you can see it's telling us i is currently our integer equal to one. That's because it paused as soon as this line is reached, which is the very first iteration of our loop. From here, you can carry on by pressing F6, but you may have to press Fn plus F6 because the function keys are often mapped to actions on maps. I'll press Fn and F6 to step over line by line, and you see that green marker on the right moving through lines as it goes. You can walk the loop in its entirety by pressing F6 again and again. But there's another command called continue, control command Y, that means continue executing my program until you hit another breakpoint. So it'll jump forward that line every time. I is now eight, nine, 10, and so forth. When your program is paused, you'll see something useful on the left of Xcode's window, this thing over here. This is a backtrace that shows you all the threads in your program and what they're currently executing. So if you find a bug somewhere in method D, this backtrace will show you that D was called by C, which was called by B, which in turn was called by A. It effectively shows you the events leading up to your problem, which is invaluable when trying to spot bugs. Xcode also gives you an interactive LLDB window, where you can type commands to query values and run methods. If it's visible, you'll see LLDB down here in the bottom of your Xcode window. If you don't see that, go to the View menu, choose Debug Area, then make sure Activate Console has been pressed. Anyway, I'll go down here, and I'm going to enter the command P for print, then I to ask Xcode to print out the value of the I variable. I'll press return now, and I'll come back and say I is equal to 10. Now while your apps pause, there is one more neat trick that few people know about. This green line over here tells us the current execution position, but it can be moved. You can just drag this thing up or down to wherever you want. So I can pull it outside my loop. I'll get a warning from Xcode saying, be very careful, this might crash your program. And I press move again, and now it'll start running from here. So it'll re-enter my loop, and I is back to being one again. Or I'm moving that thing across. I'm gonna press command full stop or command period to end running. I'll leave this print line where it is. We're gonna make a few small changes here. Breakpoint's gonna do two more clever things, but for some reason, both of them aren't used nearly enough. The first is that you can make breakpoints conditional, meaning they'll pause execution of your code only if the condition's matched. Right now, our breakpoint will stop execution every time our loop goes around. But what if we wanted to stop only every 10 times? I'm gonna right click on the breakpoint here. That's the blue arrow marker for me. I'll choose edit breakpoint. And for this window that appears under a condition, i% percent 10 is equal to zero. This uses modulo as seen in our Swift fundamentals. With that in place, execution will now only pause when i is 10, 20, 30, and so on, up to 100. You can use conditional breakpoints to execute debugger commands automatically. This automatically continue after evaluating actions checkbox is perfect for making your program continue uninterrupted while breakpoints silently trigger actions. The second clever thing that breakpoints can do is be automatically triggered when an exception is thrown. Exceptions are errors that aren't handled and will cause your code to crash. 
With breakpoints, you can say, pause execution as soon as an exception is thrown. So you can examine your program state and see what the problem is. To do that, you'll go to the breakpoint navigator up here. Then look for this tiny plus button in the bottom left corner and press that. Then from the menu that appears, choose exception breakpoint. You'll see exception has here all by default. Please change that to be objective C and we're good to go. The next time your code hits a fatal problem, the exception breakpoint will trigger and you can take action.